Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Ancient Legends Challenge. In the last episode, once the snow began to fall, our tribe was introduced to a couple very unique creatures from the mountains. We found the less threatening walrus deer, who I guess is kind of like Ace's son now. He's following constantly in his shadow, despite the fact that he's one of our only creatures with the claw. That's why I'm not really into hunting him down. Chasing him with the very few turns that we do have in the cold is probably not going to benefit us too much. So instead, we'll just let him roam around in the sea. It looks like he's actually splashing around in the tide pools right now. So we'll let him enjoy the winter while he still has the chance. We do have a much bigger threat chasing him down after all. The balance bear also spawned on the very same turn. Right now, he looks like he might be the king of the bunnies. He has claimed this bunny burrow for himself. So I'm worried that he's going to catch a whiff of our creatures by the tree, especially Daria, who only has two turns to use because she's very, very cold. So I think we're going to have Jill guide her over to the hot springs, and that would be a great way for them to notice that Butterbee and Topaz have made it across the stream. Butterbee always wanted to explore the other side of the water, and now she's finally getting her chance. In fact, I think even Jill would realize that this place is much safer than their current location. So we'll bring her down to the shore too, so they can make their move on the next turn. And that gives Topaz and Butterbee a little bit of extra time to explore. Maybe see if they can find some more of those moles or some tasty roots to dig up too. We have tons of bunnies in this area, which means that there's probably quite a bit of food for us to harvest because the bunnies always go where the berry bushes are. They're like our little radars in a way. We can use them to track down those food sources that'll help out our tribe the most. Fennec Chu, meanwhile, is not too happy with the current situation. She would love nothing more than to scale the mountain again and find her winter prince. But unfortunately, I think we may have been tricked. It looks like it's getting a little bit colder in the mountains again. So I don't think spring is around the corner after all. I wouldn't be surprised if it starts to snow before the spring actually thaws all the ice on the cliffs. So unless she wants to get swallowed up by the storms, she's going to have to wait here with her sister for a little while longer. But she can get to know this new creature in the process. Taduke is also feeling a little bit cold, so let's bring him up to his new tribe mates so we can warm him right up again. Oh no, don't tell me. Oh, I had a feeling it would be you. That means that the leeches actually swam upstream to get to you, Jill. Well, that is very, very unfortunate. We're going to have to ask maybe Butterbee or Daria to help you out in the next turn, but unfortunately your family is all tired out right now. Oh, and hello! Are you investigating our summer and winter families? Our spring families, as they're turning out to be? Well, thankfully, Sydney is ready to have her next child, so we won't have to worry about the rogue male for this family right now. I was considering introducing him to Fennec Chu, since she is going to make her way back to her prince eventually. Maybe she'd run into him in the process but I'm still going back and forth as far as whether his big body would be worth breeding into our tribe. I do think it's very unlikely that we'll see it on their babies. Maybe it'll be stuffed in their inactive traits, but otherwise, that is a lot of less fortunate genes that we would be breeding into our lines. The big ears in particular is something that they're both showing, and I would hate to lose the cold resistance over such a silly trait. So I'm still not sure if we're going to see them interact, but it's definitely an option for us. As long as he stays alive anyway. And it looks like we may have unlocked a gene too. I think that unlocked when we picked up this twiggy little bush. Was that maybe the nimble fingers? Yeah, that's what it was, okay. So I guess picking up that nesting material counted toward the nimble fingers too. Which is all well and good because Petal desperately needs to make her nest. We're just a tiny bit too short on nesting material for her to make it on this turn. So we'll have her use her last turns to gather up more of the grass. And then I think we might be just about ready to skip the day. So let's see what Sydney's next baby is going to look like. 
Hopefully they'll be just as strong as Storm Sky. Oh my gosh, those spots? She looks like she's covered in tiny little bits of snow. Oh, that is adorable. And she has the antlers too. I think she is our first creature with the majestic antlers, which is so fitting for the mountainside. Kind of ironic considering she has two parents with the ram horns instead, but I guess that makes her even more special. So the next name on my list is Melodine, which is a super pretty name. Welcome to our tribe, little one and I'm sure you have many adventures in your future. I think it would be a good idea for these two to have a nice big brood together. That way they can travel the mountains in packs and they won't have to worry about freezing. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's go straight over to poor little Jill, who's going to need an extra hand with this pesky leech. So I suppose we will have Daria do the honors, remove the parasite, lick her wounds, and then she'll have one extra turn to spend making her way across the stream. We'll just have to be mindful that she doesn't end up picking up a leech too. It seems like they always love to lurk right in this tide pool. So perhaps just for safety, we'll have Jill stay next to her, and at the end of the turn, we'll move them to their family. We might want to check and see if we can still smell the balance bear out here too just in case it may have moved. Yeah, it's way too far away now, but that's actually a good thing for us because it means it's not tracking us down. I would be very, very surprised if it knows where we are right now. So let's have Sydney scoot over here to breed again with Birch, and then maybe Storm Sky can start exploring. We'll want to change one of his gems first since he does actually have the digging trunk in his genetics. Melodine doesn't, she has the cracker jaw instead, but I feel like that'll actually be quite important for their family. We're going to make our way down toward this shore, where another one of these trees is waiting, so they'll be able to crack open all of those delicious acorns. You know, we might actually have Sydney pick up this nest now. That would give us just enough nesting material to let Petal have her first baby. So let's set up a nest on top of the stump and you can use the rest of your turns to pick up the extra little twiggy bushes again, and then maybe clear out more of the grass around you. We'll leave the grass on the stump just for the extra protection, because Ace is probably quite paranoid about the dangers, even of this uh, bluebird that's in our sky right now. This is our very first one to spawn on the mountains, so I'm sure he's looking to scoop up our babies, and he's staying very, very close to our summer core so he must be hoping for a little digging trunked baby to snack on. Now, Taduke is quite an interesting individual. He has quite a few water genetics hidden away in his traits, so it makes me think that wherever he came from must have been a warm climate where everybody enjoyed swimming in the ocean. And maybe his cold, snowy appearance wasn't taken too kindly. Maybe his old tribe mates saw it as some terrible omen of things to come and that's why they banished him to a different island. But I think Taduke is going to enjoy his time here, because so many of our creatures celebrate the cold weather, just like Fennec Chew and her Winter Prince. But it looks like we're safe to move Jill across the water, so let's have her reunite with her little babies. Oh no, and she's scared away the mole too. Oh, Topaz is going to be so upset. Maybe we should have her clear out this grass? so that won't happen again in the future. And the bunnies are coming right over to her too. I mean, I guess she is kind of sitting on their home. Maybe that bunny is just hoping to uh, go back to rest. Oh, and it looks like Fennec Chew may have attracted the attention of the wandering male after all. Well, just in case, why don't we go ahead and uh, fix up her mutation menu? I'm going to place the medium ears into the first slot. I don't want the big ears becoming a problem, so hopefully that will keep it off of her babies. Then I suppose what we could do, since we don't really have too many other options right now, is place the nimble fingers that we just unlocked into her second slot. That way she could help us out with, or rather her babies, could help us out with the acorn collecting too. So when she does finally return to the Ghosts of Winter, her babies will have a way to contribute. So let's see what Ace's very first baby is going to look like. 
Oh no, there's a new digging trunk? Well, that's a little bit disappointing. I guess all of those digging chunks that we put in Petal's mutation menu wasn't quite enough to help us out. But that being said, it looks like Spring may have actually returned. I don't want to jinx it, but it seems quite warm. Maybe this baby is a little bit luckier than we thought. She does have the golden fur that our summer court is so known for. So you might just be the second coming of our summer princess. The next name on my list is Reezy. So welcome to the tribe, little one. And we'll see if you can't help out your father with that claw of yours. The bunnies are an ever-present nuisance after all, so maybe she can make sure that none of them get to their berry bushes. In fact, let's bring Taduke over here to pick the berries. You know, if it's getting warmer, then it would be perfect traveling weather too. Maybe it's time for Fennec Chu and Taduke to make a break for it. She knows now that her twin sister is going to be just fine. Now that she's starting a family all her own over by the grasslands, She'll have plenty of babies to keep her company. So as difficult as it's going to be for Taduke to hop his way up the cliffs, especially with those frog toes, we'll try our best to carve out a path for you. Oh, Fennec Chu is actually going to be very, very surprised to see all of these new little babies that Birch has had. But hopefully that rogue male is still in the area. I'm actually surprised that he left us. Maybe he's actually hoping to join the Court of Summer as well. Maybe he's not too much of a fan of all of this cold weather. Let's scoot Petal down here so she can still pick up this twiggy bush, but she should be able to breed with Ace too. Now we're only missing one more tiny little bit of nesting material before we can make an extra nest. So we'll have to see if we can pick up some more for Sydney to use once we make our way down to that tree. The extra stumps would be a great way for her to keep watch as well, just in case anything else spawns on the mountains. I think the only creatures we haven't seen yet would be the Arctic Ram Foxes, and those can be tricky because they like to travel in packs. That's why we don't want to separate our babies either. Our younger creatures who wouldn't have quite as much energy to use against them. But let's see, are all of your berries gone over here? I think they definitely are. I heard those bunnies stealing them left and right. So instead we'll have to focus on carving a pathway up to this tree. And I'm sure that Butterbee and Topaz are ready for the job. There is actually so much going on in this grass. You know, this might be the perfect place for you guys to set up camp. As long as no other dangers follow you out here. We still don't know where that balance bear ran off to after all. Hopefully he's decided to stay with all of his little bunny friends. But it looks like we do have a permanent nest to use as well. So hopefully we can find some new creatures to breed with this family soon. Because they have found the most plentiful home in the entire island. Now let's see if all of the snow is going to start to melt away. Yes! Oh, it looks like summer's finally here, and just in time too, because now our winter prince and our summer princess can see this extra little glacier that we have by the ports. Alright, so I think it might be time for you guys to make your way down there. After we pick up a little bit of extra meat, your babies are starting to get older too, so it's the perfect time for a little family outing. Oh my gosh, the bunnies are guarding the glacier? Well, this is quite interesting. Let's have Storm Sky scoop up at least one of them, and then hopefully his parents can get down to the stump. There we go, and light up this entire area for them too. So now we should be able to see if there are any dangers out here, if anything has spawned during the winter. But it looks like the bunnies might have free reign over this area. Well, what better way to teach their children about the history of their tribe than by cracking open their very own glacier? Oh my gosh, and our son has returned. He's returned from the ocean, and now he's here to meet his new little sister. It looks like he still has 39 days remaining on his lifespan. But yeah, look at that, we're barely doing any damage at all by attacking him with ace. So I think we're going to use our time digging up roots and whatnot. Things that'll get us a little bit more food at a much faster pace. 
oh, we need to come up with a name for this guy. I can't actually change his name because that has been taken away from the game. We need to go into the family tree to do that, and of course, the walrus deer is not quite a member of our family. But if you guys have any suggestions for the walrus deer's name, then do let me know. We might as well come up with something since he's such a staple part of our tribe. Now, Reezy, you can come down here and play in the clovers right next to your father. So we can have Petal jump on her throne again and uh, have her next baby on the next turn. This guy is adorable. I think he's playing hide and seek with Reezy now. He wouldn't really make a good babysitter since he doesn't really know how to sit still, but he's trying. You have to give him points for trying. Now, Fennec Chu, you have finally almost made it back to your winter ghosts. We'll just have you guys pick off a couple more of those bunnies along the way. So we have plenty of food to bring to the new babies. It looks like we could also have Birch lunge down at these bunnies too. Just to scatter them enough so we can get to the glacier on the next turn. Oh, Sydney can even make her nest now. Excellent. We picked up just enough nesting material for that. And I suppose, Melodine, since you only have one more turn anyway, we'll have you pick up some more nesting material for the other future mothers. Now, how are you guys doing over here? Well, the bunnies are still making a mess, stealing each and every last one of your berries. But it seems pretty fitting that this family would be the one at war with the rabbits just like their grandmother before them. And we can't really expect these rabbits to give up all of their bushes without a fight anyway. So we'll just go ahead and uncover as many as we can so we know where they actually are. I'm pretty sure that one of these berry bushes was toxic too. It looked like we had a toxic berry bush over next to the normal one right here. So we might have to have one of our creatures investigate that. We do have the toxic fangs and the inactive traits of both Topaz and Butterbee. So, I mean, if we could pull that out of their genetics, I think we'd be golden. No more worrying about food for us. But with that, let's cross our fingers that the snow is going to stay far away. Because not only do we have brand new little babies to meet, but we have that glacier to crack open too. Yeah, looks like every last bit of snow has melted now. And we have a gorgeous baby in the nest. Oh, she actually has the mask. She looks like a little wolf. Oh my goodness, she is adorable. The perfect winter ghost. The next name on my list is Scotia. So welcome to our tribe. And now watch in awe as we bring your family down to the next glacier to see if maybe we can crack it open. Yeah, I definitely feel like Storm Sky was made for this. He's the one with the cracker jaw after all. So we'll leave that meat for his family to collect, and we'll see what's waiting inside. Hopefully it's not going to be a second taking trunk. Hopefully it's going to be a new genetic. I think it must be. Oh, is it the tail? Yes, it's actually the tail. And it looks like this creature is much younger than Ramey was. She only has two gems, but look at that giant hammer tail. And does she actually have the big body too? Oh my goodness, yes! Alright, so she would be much better for us to breed into our tribe, rather than the rogue male. Wherever he ran off to, I'm still not quite sure where he is. Maybe he decided to make a home over by this tree instead. He doesn't seem to be bothering any of our creatures right now, so as long as he stays away, I guess we'll be fine. But let's go ahead and change her gems over to blue, just so we know that she has that hammer tail, of course. And so as we work on breeding that into our lines, we'll be able to separate the creatures who have it in their genetics. Yes, and this little baby has a digging trunk. Oh, she looks so cute. Very similar to Ramey, actually. She's just missing the spots, of course. But otherwise, her grandmother's presence is very strong in her. We've had a ton of females born into the tribe lately. We might want to actually consider bringing some of our creatures to the top of the mountain. I know we did that for our previous tribe, the Frostbite tribe. They would come together to meet when the days were warm, and that would be a great way for us to start new families. The next name on my list is Nina. So welcome to the tribe, little one. 
I'm sure you'll have an excellent time out here digging up those roots. So in the next episode, assuming that the summer hangs around for a few more days, maybe we will send a few ambassadors from the different parts of our families to meet each other at the very tippity top of the mountain. I know that our other families would be very interested to hear about this creature after all. Is messy, with a brand new genetic to bring life to those legends that they know so well. And I'm really looking forward to watching our little wolf babies, our little ghosts of winter, go charging through the mountains too. I think they'll have control over this land before long. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!